Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. Today is Friday, so it's very good. We're gonna rest the weekend. And well, I hope you had a very nice day. And um, of course, we're gonna start with the platform. So this is the class of today. And of course, that is the question already for you tonight. And uh, we are going to check the attendance. So let me just check here. Okay, let's see how it goes. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Okay. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very good. Perfect. Okay, I got you yourself. Very well. Okay. So we are going to continue tonight uh, speaking about ethics and... Sorry. So we are going to uh, start with a video. So I'm going to show you. And of course, you are going to tell me opinions and uh, comments about that one specifically. So here we go. I have been a television comedy writer. I have been a television comedy. Cautionary tale, right? You move to Hollywood, you get seduced by the bright lights and the fast cars, and before you know it, you're re He doesn't want to work today. I have been a television comedy writer for almost 25 years. I have written sketches and animated shows and sitcoms, but for the last decade, my real passion has been the study of ethics. It's a classic cautionary tale, right? You move to Hollywood, you get seduced by the bright lights and the fast cars, and before you know it, you're reading 18th century German philosophy. I've always been an intense rule follower. When I was in kindergarten, our teacher would tell everyone to line up, and I would immediately line up, and then I would look at all the other kids who were still goofing off, and I would think, what are they doing? Did they not hear her? She said to line up. I rinsed my mouth with mouthwash for at least 30 seconds every night, because on the label, it says, use for 30 seconds. I know, I'm irritated by me too. But the real reason that I became interested in ethics is because in 2005, I royally and epically screwed something up. So, 2005, my wife, JJ, driving along in slow-moving traffic, bumps into the guy in front of her. Police officer looks everything over, doesn't see any damage, they exchange numbers, 
and they go on their way. A couple days later, we get a notice that the guy wants $836 because, according to him, the entire fender needs to be replaced. This is happening during Hurricane Katrina. JJ and I had just been to New Orleans on a trip. We had really fallen in love with this beautiful city, which was now literally underwater. I was very riled up. This was hitting me really hard. So I went and I looked at the guy's car, and if I got very close and I strained my eyes, I could just barely see this little line on the crease. It looked like the mark you make with a pencil on the wall when you're trying to hang a picture. And I told the guy, essentially, that he shouldn't care about this. I told him that things like this were why car insurance rates in L.A. were so expensive. I told him that cars get little dings and dents all the time, and he was stupid to care about that. I told him that there were more important things in life than this, like Hurricane Katrina. And then I made him an offer. I said that I would donate $836 to the Red Cross Katrina Relief Fund in his name if he agreed not to file this claim and fix his car. He said he would think it over. So I went back to work, and as very confident people are wont to do, I started telling all my friends about how awesome I was being. <laughs> and then they jumped in and started pledging more and more money if this guy would agree not to fix his car. So suddenly it was $2,000, then it was $5,000. In like a day and a half, I had pledges from hundreds of people all across the country of more than $25,000 if this guy would agree not to file an insurance claim and fix his car. And by the way, he has no idea this is happening. <laughs> he is completely in the dark. I started a blog where I gave people <laughs> hourly updates. Yeah, it's beginning to dawn on you what a bad idea this is, right? I started a blog, gave people updates. I got media inquiries from news programs, from NPR. I had a dream of rescuing New Orleans by myself, <laughs> with nothing more than my computer and a fire hose of self-righteous anger. <laughs> and then I started to feel sick to my stomach. And so did JJ at the exact same moment. We both were suddenly overcome with this awful feeling that there was something very bad and wrong about what we were doing, but we could not pinpoint what it was. I just remember thinking, all right, I don't care about cars getting little dings and dents, but this guy does. Is that wrong somehow? I don't think that's wrong. And also, is this little tiny negotiation that we're in really worth all of this fury and rage and shame that I'm whipping up and sending in his direction? I don't think it is. So I did what any rational person would do in this situation. I started crying and I hid under my bed. <laughs> and then I started reading philosophy. And I started calling philosophy professors and asking them to talk this out with me. And in the process, yeah, and they all, by the way, did it, because philosophy professors love talking about philosophy. <laughs> the drop of a hat, they will all talk about philosophy with you. So in the process, I learn all of these incredibly wonderful theories that the smartest people who have ever lived have developed over the last 2,500 years that help us make better decisions and become better people. For example, I learned about Immanuel Kant and the categorical imperative. So Kant says when we're about to do something, we have to design a rule or a maxim that we could will to be universal, meaning we have to imagine what if everyone did what we're about to do, what would happen to the world? Would it be okay or would it get all screwed up? So the maxim I'm designing here is something like anytime two people are in any kind of negotiation, one of them can drag into the negotiation an entirely unrelated global calamity <laughs> and tell the other person that they shouldn't care about whatever they care about because they should care about that instead. That world would suck, right? Like, your sister borrows $5 from you, you ask for it back, she says, how dare you care about $5 when the polar ice caps are melting? No one wants to live in this world, right? Kant also says, by the way, that you should treat people as ends in themselves and not a means to an end, meaning you shouldn't use people to get what you want. Well, guess what I was doing? I also learned about Aristotle and the study of virtue ethics. So Aristotle says there are certain qualities we should all have, things like generosity and courage and friendliness and mildness. And he wants us to practice them every day so that we not only have them, we have them in the exact right amount. We don't have a deficiency of them, 
and we don't have an excess of them. Now, virtue ethics can be kind of maddeningly imprecise, but at the very least, it was pretty clear that I was exhibiting an excess of anger and maybe a deficiency of friendliness. I wasn't nailing it, is the point. Like, I definitely was not getting it exactly right. Then I learned about utilitarianism, made famous by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. And this one actually gave me a shred of hope that I was doing something good, because utilitarians only care about the results of our actions. They only care that we are creating more happiness and pleasure than we are pain and suffering. So yes, I'm being obnoxious and moralistic and high-handed to this guy, causing him some amount of pain, but an enormous amount of money is going to be given to people in great need. So the amount of happiness I'm creating outweighs the amount of pain and suffering. But the utilitarians also said that when we're calculating the amount of happiness or pain we've created, we can't just think about the one person we're dealing with. We have to think about the fact that everybody in our society will now both know this happened and will fear that it could someday happen to them. And since we've already seen what a terrible, stinky world I was trying to create, everyone in our society would become a little bit bummed out and sad by what I did. And so the total amount of pain and suffering I've created might actually outweigh the happiness. I never got a straightforward answer, obviously, because Aristotle never wrote about like fender benders involving horse-drawn carriages in ancient Athens. But at the very least, it sure felt like Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill would be a little disappointed in me. And it sure felt like Aristotle would be a little annoyed. And it sure felt like Immanuel Kant would wave a disapproving finger at me. And if all of the world's greatest philosophers are on one side of a debate, and you are on the other side, <laughs> you fucked up. OK. <laughs> so I called the guy. I apologized profusely. I told him the entire story. He was very kind and forgiving, which was an enormous relief to me. I told him I had already cut him a check, which was in the mail. I went back to the blog. I told everybody the outcome. Most people, not all, but most of them thought it was a pretty happy outcome. I encouraged them to give money to the Red Cross anyway, because giving money to hurricane victims is a nice thing to do. And in the end, more than $25,000 was indeed donated to the Red Cross Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. Uh, don't applaud that. <laughs> That's the happy result of a bad event. So why did this embarrassing, miserable mistake that I made make me want to continue to study moral philosophy? If I told you that you were going to be on Jeopardy, how would you prepare? You would read some trivia books and flip through a world atlas. If I told you that you were going to take a half-court shot at an NBA game, for the chance to win $50,000, how would you prepare? You would get a basketball, you would go to the YMCA, and you would practice hucking up half-court shots. Well, you're probably never going to be on Jeopardy. You are probably never going to take a half-court shot at an NBA game for a chance to win $50,000, but you will, I guarantee it, at some point become embroiled in a complicated, confusing, ugly, gut-wrenching moral dilemma. That is just a fact of life on Earth. There will be a dilemma in which there is no clear rule to follow. There is only a kind of vague investigation, and everything you do seems like it might be wrong. So how do you prepare for that? By reading theories of ethics and understanding what they say, what they mean, how they purport to help us make better decisions and become better people. And by the way, just reading these theories is no guarantee that you will actually make the right choice when you're inside one of these complicated and tangled ethical dilemmas. You can take all the practice half-court shots you want at the YMCA, but when you set foot on the floor of the NBA arena and there are 15,000 screaming fans, you're probably still going to throw up an air ball, right? But if you've prepared, you will increase your odds of success. You will increase the chances that you sink the shot or that you at least get the ball close enough to the rim that you don't embarrass yourself and become a meme. <laughs> Understanding ethical theories is how we increase our chances of success at simply being human beings who have to negotiate with other human beings. 
And to me, there is nothing more important than that. Thank you. Okay, what did you get from the video? I think that it was a very interesting situation. The majority of us will think to expose like he did, expose to this guy, he's uh, trying to, that I pay more for that. At the end, uh, during the process, he realized and was um, uh, like, oh, how can I say this? He was um, face. I don't know, to another reality that he didn't, he, that he wasn't aware about ethics and was a learning at the end. Um, I, I understood, that I, I had some, some issue, but I understood that at the end he paid to this guy, right? The, the 830. Yeah. It, yeah. it was 8,000 or, or? No, it was not 1,000. It was like 800 something, as I remember. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but uh, it's not a good idea to expose someone or expose a situation um, because there will be consequences and, and the ethic is part of that. <laughs> but sometimes we don't think in ethic at the time of acting. We just move forward because of our feelings in, in that moment. And then we regret and, and say, oops. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's interesting, as you say, I mean, uh, sometimes, and that I believe has happened to everybody, sometimes we want to do a good action, but at the end, it's a total misunderstanding, right? It's a total mm -hmm. mess, and people sometimes even get angry, or they believe that you are a mean person, I mean, but it's not what you meant, I mean, you try to do something good, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you didn't think very well how was going to be the results of that one. But mm -hmm. it's not that you are a bad person. Sometimes uh, that happens, right? So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, perfect. Any other comments? Um, something that... Um, was to me important that he said is that even if we study the philosophy of the ethic or we have all the, the theory of the ethic, uh, that doesn't mean that we, we choose the right option all the time. But if we study more about that, maybe the possibility of choose the right option will be higher. So uh, what I learned from that is that it's um, <clears throat> sometimes not about the, the theory. It's something more related with what we believe, what we think is the correct, because there are many points of view um, from all the people in the world. So for example, something that I think is current for me, for other person, maybe will not be current. So um, also it's important to to have that in mind that um, learning from the ethic will help us to, to achieve the, the right option or the right, uh, yeah, the right decision. Okay. Yeah, actually, that is true. I mean, uh, we have standards uh, in society about what we say before. You remember honesty, sincerity, responsibility. We expect everybody is responsible and we, everybody knows that you are responsible for your actions and or things that you have, right? Uh, but in some situations, we have different points of view, different standards. Uh, we believe this is correct. Uh, I mean, nowadays, it's even more more real that part. For example, one of the biggest thing that is happening in the world is the uh, the social media uh, OnlyFans, right? I mean, a lot of people consume that one, and a lot of women 
they take advantage of that one. Some, I mean, I have seen in the news that uh, women that were at the church or teachers or uh, any kind of situations happening, they are changing things and they believe that that is, is the, it's normal, it's, it's correct. Some other people might think that that is not correct at all uh, because it's something like only pictures or videos or anything like that. So standards are changing nowadays. And uh, maybe for the first time in history, people are changing that very fast throughout the media in, uh, in many ways, in many ways. I mean, it's, uh, in the past, as we learned, it was religion, it was, uh, the government is the one that settle the rules for for ethics or for what is moral or is not moral. But everything is changing nowadays, and now more than ever, we have different standards. That's why there are lots of fights over the social media or in meetings with friends, uh, because one believes one thing and the other believes the other thing, and everybody believes they're right. Right, so it's a big, big problem. And uh, just about the video, I mean, one of the good things that we can do in any kind of situation like this is to learn, right? To try to, to research. I mean, he said that he was then reading about philosophy, ethics, and many things that uh, he understood then what was going on. But, and then also that I really like about that one is that uh, he says you can get ready for any goal in your life. I mean, if you want to be a very good athlete, uh, then you can go and practice and train every day. So you get ready for that one and so on. I mean, if you want to be a good employee, you need to study. You need to research about the situation of the company and try to come with ideas. And of course, everybody's going to have a dilemma, ethical dilemma. Everybody's going to have situations where you need to decide and it's kind of difficult to take a decision. So for that kind of situations, ethics and moral philosophy is the one that we need to learn a little bit more. So we understand not only our behavior, but also other people's behavior. So there is always a way always away and maybe the most difficult part uh, is the one that we discussed yesterday i mean sometimes you know what is right to do but the difficult part is that you want something different something that is uh, self-satisfactory and that is a real problem so you are not going to fight not only be with other people's beliefs but also with your own beliefs that you you need to change, you need to grow and be a better person, even if you are not going to obtain exactly what you want. Any other comment on the video? Okay, very good. So we're going to read a little bit more about importance of workplace ethics and uh, why do you believe, why do you believe it's important to have ethics at work? Why is it important? To develop a really good job, maybe. I'm sorry, could you please repeat? Yes, to develop a really good job. Oh, very good. To develop a nice job. Uh, at the job that you need to, to do, right? Perfect, good. Any other opinion? Maybe uh, to have a good environment with the company or with the rest of the team. That is very important to have a nice environment where everybody's respectful, where everybody's taking care of the team and doing things right. Good. That is very important. Any other opinion? Why is it important to have ethics at work? To become a person you can trust in. Very good. To become somebody that the team can trust so they know that you are going to do your part, right? And uh, all the company, all the all the team is going to reach a goal. Good. 
Another question for you, uh, does your company have like an ethical code? Yes, of yes. course, mine has. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you know that ethical uh, code? I mean, not every word, but do you know what is that about? They, in my case, I can speak about my company. They make us to remember. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, the code of ethic, the code of conduct, uh, we, we might know, not by heart, as you mentioned before, but um, yeah, we might know how to, for example, if we see something that is not ethic or we have a complaint regarding the management team, we also have a private line and also we can send email information. Also, they encourage us to, re they reinforce that whispering, 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 I guess, it is not allowed. We must um, also the se the sexual harassment thing, religious, any kind of situation like that. A and I've seen they act when whenever there is a situation like that. I I've seen they 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 do something. It's not just words or advertising. Mm -mm, they act. Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect. That is important, actually. It's not just mm -hmm. words, right? Not just a paper, but uh, to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Any other? In our yeah, case, we read it every single year, too. Okay. So it's like a training that you do every day, I mean, every year. And so you are aware of the ethical code. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Heidi. And Danny, you were saying something? Yeah. In my case, is the same that uh, Heidi told us. And is uh actually is a is a there is a course that is mandatory that we have to do we have to read all the all the code we have to make to do this course and we had a uh how can i say pri private line to 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 call and and i don't know how to say the noise yet well we had to do we can do all the kind of thing uh, through the this line uh, about ethic okay very well so that is important that you don't have not only uh, the um, the guidance i mean the paper the the ethical kind of guide but also there are channels where you will be able to to contact somebody if you need help or if you have seen something that is not correct so actually, Anna Claudia already answered this question, but the next question is, um, it, it works. I mean, it's not just a paper. Uh, actually, you see that it's working, that the environment in the company is nice. And if something happens, they do, the company do something about. Yeah. Yeah, the, I I I known that um, the people that have been fired for okay. this case. Very good. So that is it, right? So it's working because it's very important the environment. It's very important to take care of the whole thing and not only for one person. So that is very important. Okay, we're gonna read a little bit about ethics at work so a importance of work uh, place ethics uh, let's see um heidi could you please read the first part the first part of sure, importance of workplace ethics right yep okay workplace ethics ensures positive um, ambience at the workplace Workplace ethics leads to happy and satisfied employees who enjoy coming to work rather than treating it as a mere source of burden. Employees also develop a feeling of loyalty and attachment towards the organization. Good, what do you get from this one? That as much as, as the, the environment and, and, and the feeling in between the employees is uh, ethical, the more 
we want to go to our to our job without any concern that we're going to be dismissed or 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 we are not going to be treated the right way or the way we want to perfect so that is very important right so uh, it's not only that the environment is good, but also that the company is going to treat us well and that we are going to be uh, there safe and that you are confident that everything is going to be fine and normal. So that is very, very important, right? Okay, so the next two paragraphs are for Ana Claudia. Okay. Uh... Starting on workplace ethic insurance. Uh, no, it's going to be organizations. Ah, okay. Let me move my my screen. Uh, 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 okay, organizations needs to have foolproof systems to measure the performance of individuals. Appraisal system needs to be designed, keeping in mind employees' performance through th throughout the year and his hair career growth. Periodic review are essential. It's mandatory for superiors to know what their subordinates are up to. You need to know who all, who all are going on the right track and who all need that extra push. Okay, what did you get from that one? Yes, I agree. And we do, our company uh, does the same as high dimension because Basically, it's every six months we all must accomplish with a course and we need to review the same things. And it what they are creative, I can say every year they change it with like they make it like a movie or like a cartoon or like a story. I've seen different versions of this type of courses, but yes, they ensure and also uh, the uh the manager, our uh, manager, the, the, the first line manager, always is pushing us to make it, but always I've seen they act by the book. Uh, and that that complete the, the good environment to work with. Mm -hmm. Very good, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, everything that you say is exactly what it says here in the paragraphs. I mean, uh, you need in the company a foolproof system, right? So that's mm -hmm. why the company sometimes, they do it like that with video, with cartoons, something that is very, mm -hmm. very sure that you will understand. And mm -hmm. it's a system, right? It's not just the code of conduct, but uh, it's Baker. the whole- <laughs> Like most of the time happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very, very good thing. Very good. Perfect. The other uh, two paragraphs are going to be for uh, Danny. Okay. W workplace ethic ensures management guide and mentors their employees well. Uh, uh, um, appraisal and salary hikes should not happen just to name sake. Workplace ethic is important. It's important that it's enable management to treat all employees as equal and think from their perspective as well. Employees must have a say in their appraisal system. Transparency is essential. It's essential. An employee is bound to move on after a year or so is he, she is not appreci appreciated and rewarded suitably. Um, it is indeed the organization lost when employees after being trained quit, quiet and move on. Do you think it is entirely the employee's fault? Why would an employee move on if he, she is fully satisfied with his her current assignment. Good. What did you get from this part? Um well mm, let me read. Um, I don't know the words appraisal. <laughs> appraisal. Um, 
And let me think. Uh, like motivation, something like that you are committed to, engaged. Okay. Well, um, it's not just about, um, I think, salary. Um, is is it also important the the ethic rules in in a company um, this this um, i think this make us feel um, very um, very safe in the workplace um, i don't i don't i i can't i can't think in a workplace without this word ethic because you could be mm, very threatened or very or in say many many situations and this this will make you quiet like say in this case okay Actually, yeah, it's, it's not possible to have a workplace without ethics, right? So it's very, very important that there are not only the rules, but the system for everything to work properly. Definitely, that is very, very important. Okay, the next two paragraphs are going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Okay, teacher. Yes, uh... Oh, sorry, the microphone was mute. Uh, employees change primarily because of the two reasons, career growth and, mon and monetary benefits. Management needs to make employees feel secure about their job and career. Unnecessary favoritans, it's against workplace acts. If you favor anyone just because he is your relative, the other team members are bound to feel demotivated and thus start looking for new opportunities. An individual output throughout the year should decide his or her increment. Organization needs to stand by their employees, even at the times of crisis. You cannot ask your employees to go just because you don't need them anymore or your work is over, such a practice is unethical. Who can you play with someone's career? Okay, what do you get from this one? Well, this is really important in one company because when you are uh, on charge of uh, a personnel, uh, you need to be partial with uh, some decision Maybe, well, in Spanish we say, I don't know if it's the same of English, that we say all in the bell or all in the in the floor. Yeah. So, because if you get some, uh, you get someone and gave some, I guess the, is the word privileges, uh, maybe the other team, We'll see that like you have a your favorite, so it's really complicated with that. So that's why you need to be ethic at the moment that you manage it, that team, and also uh, when you have a crisis like like the second paragraph says, uh, you need to be careful when maybe well, if you want to to. If you want to have a loyalty, if you want to have a loyalty employee, employees, uh, you need to be careful about something like maybe with some uh, salary increase, uh, something like that, because uh, here is the says that uh, some employees are looking for a better uh, opportunities and maybe the monetary or uh, even to to grow off uh, into the company. So that is what I, I understand. Very good. Perfect. Yeah, that is true. I mean, uh, yes, even in times of crisis, everybody has to think about 
uh, the whole thing, right? I mean, you need to be loyal to the employees and try to keep them, try to move them in a way that everybody is going to be safe. I mean, and it's, it's a, a very important thing. As we said at the beginning, uh, you need to feel secure, safe at work in every aspect. So uh, ethical or ethics aspects are going to be the ones who's going to allow that have to happen. Yep. Okay, uh, the other two paragraphs are going to be, let me just check, for uh, Roberto Orellana, is it possible for you? Not possible, Jose Rivas. Not possible, okay, Giselle. Me, teacher. Okay, Maybe. perfect. Yeah, go ahead, please. If an individual, okay? Yep. If an individual has performed well, all through, well, all through, but fails to deliver once or twice, you just can't kick him out of the system. Workplace Ethics says that organizations need to retain and nurture talent. If you have hired someone, it becomes your responsibility to train the individual, make him or her aware of the key responsibility areas, policies, rules, and regulations, and code of conduct of the organization. Employees need to be inducted well into the system. They must be aware of the organization's policies from the very first day itself. Okay, what do you get from this? Okay, in the two first lines, uh, they are talking about uh, what happens if uh, an employee fails, maybe in a task, not, not just once, maybe twice or three times or more. Um, I think if uh, he or she fails once, it's not okay at all, but you can uh, review if the um, if the train was the, was uh, how to say this was conducted in the in the best way in order to uh, this person uh, has not to fail. But if it's not like this, um, you can't uh, just fire that person, okay? You you have, uh, I, I think, okay? You have to uh, inquire uh, what was the origin of that failure and try to um, make or review that procedure in order to not repeat the situation and obviously uh, explain the situation and the new uh, proced procedure to the um, uh, to this person in order uh, to not to repeat that situation okay um, trying to retain the talent and obviously the person okay um and the second one, it's about uh, kind of same thing that I was talking about, but um, there are more things that you have to be aware of. Uh, for example, uh, not just to, uh, to, to tell the people, okay, uh, please sit down here and try to do what you want to do, no. Uh, the situation is okay. You have to be sit here because uh, the procedure is talking about this, and you have to uh, make this uh, task under these policies, uh, following these regulations, and something like this. Something like this, okay, uh, and uh, ensure that you are uh, explain 
all the uh, I don't know how to say this in English, como todo el marco de trabajo eh, uh, ilegal. Your what, I'm sorry? El marco de trabajo, o sea, todo el marco legal de trabajo, como la normativa. Oh, like the legal frame, yeah. Okay, the legal frame. And obviously the technical frame, okay? Um, yeah, uh, and, and the last, the last uh, line is, is, for me, is a key because the, the company uh, has to be ensured that all the, the induction, I don't know if it's correct to say like this, all the induction uh, have been uh, delivered in a good way to the person, okay? Uh, taking uh, or talking about uh, the technical and the legal frame, okay? For me, I, I think it's, uh, this is, uh, these two paragraphs, these two paragraphs are talking about, yeah, actually, that is very important. I mean, if you see, uh, it's not just a matter of the company to ask you to do things. I mean, also the company has the responsibility to provide you the tools, uh, the yeah. knowledge, the training, everything for you to do your job and also to behave according to the values of the company. So everything's all together. Uh, so at the end, everybody's happy, right? So if you... Uh, I remember that in another part of the program, we say that one. If people are are happy there, they are not going to uh, quit the job, and you are going to be with people that have more uh, experience, uh, more capable, and uh, I mean, the results at the end are going to be nice, right? So it's very, very important. Good. Yeah. The uh, last part says workplace, and that is going to be for, let's see, Suleyma Yvonne. Not possible. Francisco Eduardo. Not possible. Um, let's see, Marcus. Workplace, uh, okay. Workplace ethic also go a long way in the, the strengthening the bond among employees, and most importantly, their superiors. Employees tend to lie if you don't know allow them to take leaves. If you don't know allow an employee to take leave on a foreign festival, what do you expect the employee to do? What, what is the alternative left with him? He will definitely lie. Don't exploit your employees and don't treat them as machines. No employee can work at the stretch without taking a break. It's okay if they talk to their fellow workers once in a while or go out for a smoke break. <laughs> Understand your problem as well. If you feel the problem is Genuine, don't create an issue. It is but natural that once or twice they will definitely call their family members and inquire about their well being. Superiors should not have a problem with that. Okay, what do you get with this? Okay, um, <clears throat> their superiors Okay, I understand that um, there is important to not uh, exploit the employees, not, don't treat them like or as machines, and and understand their their needs, their needs, and understand that they need to have some breaks and they, they have problems, they have to call their family, they have to to go to the barrel, you know? Um, 
it is important because if we uh, superior try treat them uh, well, they perform their job in a good way, and the ethics maybe they they apply very well because they feel more comfortable in their environment and in a in difficult situation or they have to choose a hard option, decision, and maybe if they feel appreciated, they choose the curve. Okay, very good. So that is it, right? So also the company has to understand uh, that employees have needs. I mean, sometimes they need, uh, they have a permission to go and do something or uh, to feel very well. I mean, to have places where they can stay and where they can uh, gather together and speak. So many things has to be included. It's not just rules and things that the employees have to do because of the need of their um, company, but also the other way around. They need to understand their need and then, and then include that any any time that is possible. Okay, good. Uh, let me check. Yeah, this is the other one. So, management plays an essential role in calculating workplace ethics uh, in employees. Bosses need to set an example for their subordinates. You need to come on time if you expect your team members to reach office on time. So these kinds of things are things that we expect from our bosses, right? I mean, do you want me to be on time? You need to be on time. Do you want me to behave well? You need to behave very well. So the next two paragraphs are going to be for Roxana. Okay. <clears throat> Management needs to act as a sources of inspiration for the employees. It is generally observed that team managers leads influence their team members to a large extent. Superiors strictly, 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 yeah. Thank you. Superiors strictly needs to adhere, adhere, adhere. Thank you to the rules and regulation of the organization for their employees to follow the same. Remember, you have no right to call your subordinates if you yourself are at fault. Moreover, no one will brought bothers to listen to you as well. Don't expert your team members to, to sit till late if you yourself leave early. Okay, what do you get from this? Well, the main idea is give an example uh, and try to, uh, as a manager, try to uh, be always in the correct way and show to the, and show at your team to uh, work similar or try to give uh, uh, maybe a yeah a correct uh, example or way to to continue uh, in general uh, you say the example about the time and maybe a, another example in the company could be when you have a, a specific uh, situation in your work and maybe uh, you are a leader of the of the team and you have uh, the maybe the solution or or um idea to apply in that situation uh, in that case you as a leader could give a um, suggestion or could uh, give a solution at your team 
and you, well, I, I imagine that uh, when a leader uh, work in something like that, it, maybe they try to uh, teach uh, to the uh, at, at team, and the other hand, maybe uh, he is uh, or she or or he is um, maybe working in a relationship with the team because we was talking uh, in the previous class that. It's different when you work when you are working with a leader or when you're working with a, a boss. So uh, in that situation, I think that when the leader work in some some situation uh, very close with the team, um, give um, como como que le da confianza, give a, a trust. Right. Yeah. Give a yeah. plus and then um, give a maybe a correct way to continue because if you as a leader uh, working with are working with your team and teaching and always are in communication, they adapt that um, way by their self, maybe. Okay. Como que lo adaptan a ellos mismos. So uh -huh. in the next time, maybe the someone maybe uh, has an idea uh, in a specific situation and someone could teach and give a su suggestion or, or ethics. I don't know, maybe uh, try to uh, transmit the same idea. So uh, it's in general, uh, environment, um, adapt uh, correct um, actions with your co-workers, with your um, leader and with the rest of the company. So I imagine that this in general, eth when you are working in ethic form, you call a adapt everything situation or, or different situation okay yeah that is true i mean uh if you are the leader of course you are going to manage by example right you are going to do what is right and i i, I mean everybody has to do the right thing but all the employees they expect the leaders they do the best right the best mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um they are going to follow you. They are going to be with you whenever you ask them to do something. So that is that is the most basic. And it's very good what you say. I mean, uh, we discussed that one. It's not the same to be a boss than to be a leader. And uh, definitely that is part, very important part of the ethics of the company and your ethics and values, of course. And on the other hand, imagine if you are working with um leader or maybe with a boss that uh, in a specific situation uh, maybe he or she has the solution and doesn't give and doesn't help to the rest to the rest of the team maybe the rest of the of the team are working in the similar way i think that is not correct and is not ethic for because if you can help someone you maybe you don't have to when you uh, when you are external but when you are working in a team in a company and you can help someone you you have to do and it's it's not or is incorrect or is not ethic when you can help and don't do that. That is true. 
So definitely, so everything is involved in this part. As you see, ethics is very, very important because it's core in the company. So it's because everybody expects those things. It's like the values and the philosophy of the company. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we read about them and we don't pay attention, but actually that is the, the spirit of mm -hmm. the company. If you read the values of the company there, you will be able to see what they expect from you and what they can give to you. So it's a very interesting thing. Yes. Okay, we're going to do a little pause and we're going to check the attendance because the time has come. So let's see. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, let's continue with this uh, little reading. And this time uh, the option is going to be for Fernando. Could you please help us with the next paragraph? Okay, teacher. It is the role of management to motivate the employees and guide them as to what is right and wrong. A boss is like the captain of the ship. It is your responsibility to take your team members along and provide constant mentoring. Rebuking is not the only solution. If you know one of your team members is meeting his give girlfriend during office hours, do you feel insulting or criticizing in front of other will help? No. Call him to your cabin or speak to him in private and make him realize that it is not morally correct to bunk office. You need to console him and make him understand his mistake politely. Trust me, being rude will make the situation more worse. Do not discuss the matter in front of of others. The other person might not like it. Your job is to make the other person feel guilty and realize that indeed he has done something wrong. Believe me, he will never repeat his mistake. Good, what do you get from this? Uh, it's a wisely advice because if you are the leader of the, of the team or the manager of the team, uh, you have uh, responsibilities uh, for all the, the team. Uh, one of these responsibility is um, is now to to handle the 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 fall or the error of the employees. And one of these uh, fall, like the para for say, uh, or or other fall. And need to be handled um, correctly, like um, in private or in a polite form. You know, um, rebuking this employee in front of other people. Um, the other people um, might not like it, or you, you show uh, yourself as a bad manager, maybe. So, and um, know to handle the the fault, the error is a good um, 
is a good uh, characteristic of a good leader. Okay, very good. Yeah, there is a way, right? There is always a right, the correct way for you to uh, tell good things and tell bad things to employees. So, and uh, that is also part of ethical. I know that sometimes you have seen people that are not doing this properly. Uh, that happens sometimes. People, they are screaming, uh, the employees or things like that, and that is definitely not good. And you can see that the ethicals and the values of that specific person are the ones who are not good, right? Uh, it's not the employee who committed the mistake. Maybe they are not wrong. They are not correct. I mean, but uh, the values of these kind of people that are screaming all the time to employees and uh, trying to make them feel bad that is not good. So it's also part of all these things. It's not just a matter of responsibilities of the employee as we discussed. Okay, the next two paragraphs are going to be for Sonia Benitez. Len, Len as sympathetic air Actually, it's oh, going no. to be the one above, constant communication. Ah, okay, pardon. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't worry. A constant communication between the management and employees is of utmost importance in inculcating workplace ethics. Management or management. Manage, management or to be transparent with its employer, let, let, let them have a say in company decision. Let them decide, uh, decide. what is right, de decide uh, what is right and what is wrong for them. Sit with them, discussion, discuss, uh, brainstorm, ideas and listen to what they have to say. Never ignoring uh, their opinions, let them come on with their grievances. 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 Okay. Good. What do you get from this idea? What do you understand? Okay. Um, I, I consider is the person, the boss, uh, no, uh, no, 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 debería. Uh, I have no choice. You should um, ignore uh, your persons, uh, the people in the in the company, uh, because um, each opinion. Uh, the person is very important uh, uh, by future decision the company. Um, also, um, the, the people uh, or employees employees uh, have the ideas uh, when the department or the company. Uh, about the problems already, I think. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is it. I mean, uh, when anybody comes to you and asks you or, or asks for help or uh, give opinion, definitely we need to listen to them. I mean, that is very, very important. Yeah. I mean, it's not only good because of their relationship with the employees and the environment, but also because of the company itself sometimes. Okay they come with very nice idea or they are the ones who understand the processes or procedures so they can improve, they can provide a very nice feedback. So uh, this is a very basic thing, but what happens is that sometimes some leaders some bosses that are busy or they need to do many things and they don't pay attention. So definitely exactly. that is not good. Exactly, yeah, or, mass or more uh, when uh, employers uh, this um, a back office or a uh, front office um, because uh, they um, 
ha, they have they have um, they have different opinions the customer and the uh, the partners very good actually that is so true i mean they have different points of view about all the processes including customers partners uh, the people that are the suppliers providers uh, logistics things and that so definitely something that we need to avoid okay very good thank you thank you uh zonia so the next one is going to be for let's see Maria Alejandra, in the next two paragraphs, please. Okay. Uh, starting with Len. Len, a sympathetic, yeah. Uh -huh. Len, a uh, sympathetic ear to their problem as well. Try to provide them a solution. If you feel most of your employees have a problem coming to office early, as they in any case have to stay back till late in the evening, as per the client's availability, please. Uh, just the office did mean accord, according timing accord, accordingly. How can you expect your employees to reach office charge 2 a.m. when they are leaving for the day at uh, 10 p.m.? Rules and regulations should not add as in runs in their performance, be realistic and logical. If the problem is genuine, genuine as unfaith by major chunk of employees, there is no harm in ch changing the, pol the policies. Think from the employee's purpose perspective as well. Policies should don't be too free. Rigid. Rigid. Good. What did you get from that? Mm. Maybe try or the companies try to more flexible when the, the employees were maybe at 10 p.m. and you need to that or hope to the employees start with a normal day to 8 a.m. when I think that very tired and need to more time to uh, feel good to start the routine or that is schedule in that the work and maybe more flexible and comprehension when that this situation, for example, when in the companies have a closed day or tier uh, the mess. And uh, need yeah. to uh, I need to stay to I don't know to very um uh, late and okay to come two hours late in the morning the next day or one hour like this more flexible or in comprehension to that the employees um feel better is that you uh, como corresponder? Mm, yeah it's going to go according to oh according to that uh, work more hours and you try to come compensation in the morning okay. Okay, that very good perfect so that is it i mean you need to be logical and that is a problem that we have in el salvador sometimes that happens sometimes we have people that go out of the office very late and the boss says you have to come very early tomorrow i mean uh, if you don't rest very well if you don't spend time with your family definitely you are not going to be happy 
And the first thing that employees in this kind of situation try to do is to change their jobs, right? To go to other company because I mean, it's, it's not good to spend all your life at the office. I know that sometimes there are different situations. Sometimes there are different departments that they really, they really uh, have to work very hard and long hours. But then as you say, we need to compensate, right? Sometimes, I mean, if it's possible, uh, for the employees to, to stay more hours in one week and a month, maybe the next week is for you to, I mean, rest two days, okay? Don't come to the office on Mondays or on Friday and rest because you deserve it. So that is the thing that we really would like to, to have and we really have to have at the companies. Okay, the other two paragraphs are going to be for, let's see, Check who has some red. Everybody has red. Anna Claudia. Sure. Uh, let me just. From management can force or? Uh, no, rules and regulations. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just open the screen. Uh, no, actually, it's not that one. It's don't be don't too strict. Be too strict. Uh, okay. that's the one. Yeah. Don't be too strict with the employees. If someone is not present in the office, please do not call his family members to inquire about him. No one will like it. We all are mature professionals to understand that if there is work, we need to finish it first rather than waste our time in gossiping and surface social network networking sites. Management can force employees to respect the organization. Respect must be commanded and not demanded. Respect your employees if you expect the same in return. Good. What do you get on that? Uh, totally true. Uh, because I think it's part of my responsibility if that is uh, inconvenience suddenly comes up the first thing I need to do is to inform my superior or sometimes the companies, they have like a kind of tool or you can send an email that this and this is happening. Uh, in my company, we have uh, five, well, uh, through the whole year, depending on the years you've been there working, uh, you can get until um, five personal days uh, you can use this whatever you want but also there are other ones i've never used them until this year i request them uh, those are family obligation days and those are additional days and in case there is uh, something that is if you don't have those resources open because you already use them Mm, always there is the option to use like your uh, vacations days, something like that. It is, it's a kind of arrangement. And I think as an employee, I have the responsibility to inform first to the superiors, to my manager, what's going on and the reason why I'm not going to be present at work that day. And it's part of my responsibility also to present the proof of those like papers or documentation for doctors or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yes, I agree with that phrase that it says that respect must be commanded and not demanded. Mm -hmm. Very well, perfect. And that is true. I mean, I believe that when you see that your boss is nice and the company has mm -hmm. good benefits and they they give you your time, your, your spaces and things like that, you don't have to, I mean, you alone, you go and do what you need to mm -hmm. do. That's right. right. Yeah, it's like any any kind of relationship, actually. If you have respect with your family or the respect with uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend, I mean, you are going to respect them. That, mm -hmm. is, that is something that is like uh, human nature. I mean, you mm -hmm. are going to give and you are going to, exactly on what you are receiving so that is it's like a, a, a like a, i call it i was talking with someone last week ago about these situations and it's like a, 
mute performance that is there, <laughs> you yeah. know that exists. <laughs> and you do it because um, you have your values and, and, and you have like a, like a, the way you do the things. And if you want to do things right, you go over that. Okay, perfect. So there, that is it. Uh, that is so true. And as you can see, everything is related. I mean, everything that we have spoken uh, is, is, I mean, is everything in the company, all the relationship, everything. So mm -hmm. ethics is everywhere in every decision that everybody does. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last uh, paragraph, uh, Jose Rivas. Not possible. Uh, let's see, Fernando. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, the last paragraph, please. Some, some organization do not easily release their employees. Remember, you cannot stop an individual from changing his job if he, she has already decided to move on. Try to convince him once and if he or she is still not willing to continue, let him go. Employees depend on fake relieving letters, experience certificates when they do not get, get it from their previous organization on time. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, I understand you, you cannot stop uh, the development of the of the employees when they decide to move on and, and prove new things or, or, or search new opportunities. Um, because it's, it's a common problem in, in, in the company. When an employee is good, a good employee in their job, in his job, sorry, um, Sometimes the the manager uh, don't don't allow the employees uh, take new opportunities, um, and that's that's just not good for for the employees, obviously, and that's uh, um, that's provoca. It provokes. Uh -huh. Well, it's provoked and it's provoked uh, demor the demotivation in the employees. Um, so when you try to try to retain an employee by offering offering him or or, or her um, a good opportunities or yeah a good opportunity to to his or her development and, um, and that's my opinion. Very good, perfect. Actually, this is like the final consequence, right? It's like the opposite, like when uh, an employee does not do uh, everything according to the code of conduct or the job or anything like that, and you fire them, uh, also, that happens on the other on the other hand. So, when employees are not happy about the behavior, when there are things that are not good in the company, uh, I mean, as we discussed before, uh, one of the outcomes that we're looking is to get a new a new job in a different company. So, if that is happening, and it's, if it's happening a lot in the company, uh, the company has to sit down and check, and not only human resources but the whole company to check everything and everything is related to ethics. So what is going on? What are the problems that we have? So, and at the end, if they do it properly, they are going to find many problems, but they will be able to fix the problems as well. So that is very, very important. Good. So we're gonna watch another video and then we're going to check into that. Okay, so let me see if it's possible to get this big. Yeah, it's impossible. Okay, so we are gonna check on that one and let me know uh, opinions or comments about this. One day they're on top of the world. The next, poof.
There's nothing like a scandal to end a successful career in the public eye. Nobody's, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, and I certainly wouldn't. And, and I understand it. I'm not going to argue with it. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 career finishing scandals. For this list, we're including various types of performers, politicians, athletes, and other individuals in the spotlight who've seen their careers derailed by actions or events deemed morally or legally wrong. Do you guys want me to finish my answer? That'd be reasonable. You do the questions, I do the answers, and this jackass interrupts me. How about that as the, as the new rule of the game? However, we're excluding scandals centering on lengthy trials, such as those of O.J. Simpson or Bernie Madoff. How oh, long we want Mr. Madoff to go to jail? Number 10. Winona Ryder, shoplifting. A-list performers not only make tons of money, they're often given expensive gifts from clothing and jewelry designers who then get free publicity when stars wear their creations. So it seemed unlikely that such a celebrity would steal these kinds of items from a department store. Oh, it wasn't my due. You know I didn't want to do it. But you did do it. This was apparently not the case for Ryder, though, who was arrested on shoplifting charges at the turn of the century and convicted of three felonies. Seemingly unstoppable during the 90s, post-arrest, the award-winning actress was practically scrubbed from the trailer for Mr. Deeds, her 2002 film with Adam Sandler. Ooh, there he is. How's I being mugged? Good luck. See you at the office. Don't worry, I'll get him. And her career has been in the slow lane ever since. Is that your long-term plan to work in retail? Number nine, Paula Dean, racist language. Paula Dean was alleged to have said the N word multiple times. For years, Paula Dean was the undisputed queen of down home Southern cooking. Ignoring prevailing health trends that cautioned against the overuse of butter, sugar, cream, and deep fryers. And I offer my sincere apology to those that I have hurt, and I hope that you forgive me. Unfortunately, Dean's tendency to go against political correctness extended beyond the kitchen. A former employee claimed in a lawsuit that Dean had used racial slurs off camera. According to the deposition, Dean was asked, have you ever used the N-word yourself? To which she replies, yes, of course. When Dean admitted that she had used the N-word in the past and offered a tearful apology, she lost her popular Food Network TV show and the support of several sponsors. But it's too late. Because the Food Network turned around and said, hey, you know what, Paula, you're terminated. Currently, she's attempting a comeback with her own network. Well, welcome to the Paula Dean Network. You can throw out your TV now, because this is where you can find me. Number eight, Millie Vanilli, lip syncing. Girl, you know it's true. Uh. In the era of auto-tune and pre-recorded tracks for live performances, it could almost be argued that Fab Morvan and Rob Pilatus were just ahead of the curve. But even though many pop stars benefit from the technological enhancement of their own voices, the voices of this late 80s duo belonged to session singers. I'm just in love, girl. And this is true. You know it's true. When it finally came to light that Morvan and Pilatus could barely speak English, let alone sing in that language, and that other singers had done the vocals on their album, the deception destroyed what once seemed a very promising career. The men were also stripped of their Grammy Award. The pair was returning the Grammy Awards they won for the Best New Artist of 1989, but the Recording Academy had already stripped them of the trophies the day before. Although Morvan eventually achieved moderate success as a musician, Pilatus succumbed to drugs in 1998. Being punched every day in the public eye leaves marks. Number seven, Michael Richards, racist rant. Hello, I'm Kramer. Nice to meet you. See you later. <laughs> as Cosmo Kramer on Seinfeld, Richards seemed goofy and lovable. And for many fans, it was impossible not to associate the actor with the loopy but harmless character. Here, take one. I don't want one. No, they're good. They're, I don't want any. Just take one. No, stop it. Kramer, stop it. 
That all changed in 2006 during a comedy club show when Richards lashed out at hecklers in the audience. Shut up! 50 years ago you had your own tied down with a fucking pork up your ass! <laughs> While calling them out for their rudeness and loudness was understandable, other comedians have similarly challenged audience members. The situation took an unexpected and career-ending turn when Richards unleashed a barrage of racial slurs. Though he attempted to publicly apologize, Richards officially retired from performing stand-up comedy in 2007. Every time I see this backdrop, I think about Kramer f up. <laughs> Number six, the Dixie Chicks, George W. Bush diss. The landslide will bring you down. It was the diss heard round the world. When band member Natalie Maines announced during a London show that the group was ashamed of being from the same state as then President George W. Bush, the Brits cheered. Just so you know, we're ashamed the President of the United States is from Texas. But once the comment was reported in the media, many American fans seethed. Some country music radio stations banned the chick's music, and Maines even received death threats. And I didn't know that kind of hatred existed, and it was weird to see it be taught to someone. Boycotts caused the group's music to plummet in the charts and hurt their sales. Eventually, though, the fervor died down enough for the group to win multiple Grammy Awards in 2007. Our core fans have always stayed true to us, and I want to thank them for, um, for staying with us. Number five, Anthony Weiner, Sexting. Anthony Weiner's penis. <laughs> yes, I, I kept that in as long as I could. It's normally a positive thing when a politician shows openness regarding modern technology and new methods of communication, such as social media. For me, it just comes down to this, which is, what is wrong with you? However, in the case of this former member of the U.S. House of Representatives, there is such a thing as being too comfortable. This is the picture that started the controversy, tweeted from the account of one of Congress's brightest Democratic stars and directed to the Twitter name of this 21-year-old college student. Wiener lived up to his name by demonstrating a tendency to overshare photos of his own attributes with women other than his wife via Twitter. So today I am announcing my resignation from Congress. Yeah! The sexting scandal caused him to resign from Congress in 2011 However, in 2013, he was allegedly at it again as similar antics killed his mayoral ambitions. I want to again say how very sorry I am to anyone who has received the receiving end of these messages and the disruption that this has caused. Number four, Pete Rose, gambling. Pete Rose hurled into Ray Fossey, who is slow in getting up. In 20 plus years as a baseball player, Pete Rose was exceptional. Winning multiple World Series championships, numerous awards, including Most Valuable Player, and breaking several major league records, most notably Ty Cobb's hit record. Kicks and he fires, Rose Wayne. There it is, there it is, get out, get out, all right. Hit number 41, 92. After retiring from playing, Rose became a manager. His outstanding career guaranteed induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame until evidence surfaced that he'd been betting on baseball games during his stint managing the Cincinnati Reds. Baseball Commissioner Bart Giamatti in New York ended six months of swirling questions and banished Pete Rose permanently from baseball. As a result, Rose was declared permanently ineligible for the Hall of Fame. You're 73 years old, you have a full-time hey, job. Hey, if I don't look at it, I don't act it, and I have a lot of bills. I mean, you have to work. Hey, fortunately or unfortunately, I'd rather be working in baseball. Number three, Herman Cain, sexual harassment and adultery. Cain has not talked about the latest accusation, but he did say earlier this week that even if more women came forward, they were all making their stories up. In a crowded field of Republicans seeking their party's nomination for the 2012 U.S. presidential elections, Cain stood out for several reasons. Unfortunately, many of the reasons weren't good. I know you dismissed the idea of a sexual relationship with her. Uh, yes. But nevertheless, you, you, you did give her money over the years, and that raised questions, a basic one, why? First, there was an advertisement featuring Kane's chief of staff, Mark Block, 
who apparently got so excited talking about the campaign that he couldn't finish the commercial without a smoke break. From there, things went further downhill as the aspiring presidential contender was accused of sexual harassment and adultery. This eventually led to his withdrawal from the race and politics. So you agreed with President Obama on Libya or not? Okay, Libya. Number two, Bill Cosby, sexual assault allegations. Listen, let's put on some music around here. <laughs> <laughs> the Cosby Show brought him into millions of living rooms as perfect dad Cliff Huxtable. Long before the popular sitcom debuted, Cosby was building his reputation as a family-friendly entertainer. It's Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. Playing a trainer on an early TV series and creating the Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids cartoon. This is affecting me in my house. It's affecting me. <laughs> And it has really affected these women. So, when accusations that he'd previously drugged and sexually assaulted dozens of women started surfacing in 2014, the fallout caused Cosby to cancel some live appearances, and his fatherly reputation is probably irreparably damaged. The old story was if you, you took a little pen. drop, no, it was on the head of a pin. pin. Right. And you put it, it in, in a drink. Coca-Cola. Don't Cut. matter. It doesn't make it. And the girl would drink it. And, and she's yours. Hello, America. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. The, the, first of all, I'm past libel. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, there's this, there's this whole thing in America where, like, you're libel-proof. Right. Because you've had so much crap said about you. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's totally awful. Do I? Am I an addict? No. When have you Have I tried it? Um, probably in one of my drunken stupors, probably approximately about a year ago. And the indecent exposure part of it? I maintained at the time it happened that it didn't happen, and I maintain that still. Washington, who played Dr. Preston Burke on the ABC Hospital drama, was fired from the show for using homophobic slurs towards his castmate, T.R. Knight. No, I did not call T.R. a f Oh, you sure are a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm crazy? Yeah. yeah. How are you calling me crazy? crazy? You think yeah. I'm crazy? Yeah. Number one, Mel Gibson, anti-Semitic and racist rants. What would you do if you were stuck in one place and every day was exactly the same and nothing that you did mattered? In the classic 1993 comedy Groundhog Day, the main character lives the same day over and over and over again. Unfortunately, when it comes to actor Mel Gibson and reports of his anti-Semitic vitriol. Every single day I wake up and I think of a reason not to do it every single day. It sometimes feels like the public has been experiencing their own version of Groundhog Day for the past several years. But it's the reported threats against Oksana Grigorieva that are bringing the most attention. Esther House in a letter says Gibson told him, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to have her killed. Previously known for his acting talent, leading man good looks, and ability to sell movie tickets, the American-born Australian actor's career has increasingly been overshadowed by incidents highlighting his temper and his vicious, frequently alcohol-fueled verbal outbursts and anti-Semitic rants. Uh, Edge of Darkness opens uh, today. It's good to see you back in the saddle and uh, doing what you do best. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye-bye. Asshole. Do you agree with our list? That's the <laughs> dumbest thing I ever heard. What career finishing scandal do you think is the most memorable? I don't have to ask anybody. Now go on in and change your pants. For more fascinating top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe. Okay, what did you get from this one? You made me to remember that scandal with Millie Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> the handsome boys in the front and the other ones in the background. Yeah, that was, I mean, at that point, you know, in, in the video, actually, they say that one, that right now maybe won't be big deal, right? Mm -hmm. And that is something that we have been discussing, that ethics changes. So mm -hmm. right now, it's like a normal way. You go and see people that are not singing in concerts and people don't care about that one. But mm -hmm. back in the days, that was a huge scandal. They, 
I mean, everything was finished for them. So it was a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I was surprised about the attitude of Mel Gibson. Well, it's not, he doesn't like me like an actor, but I didn't know he had that uh, addiction with uh, the alcohol and, and makes him to act in that way. I didn't know many things happen so that is another thing that we uh, can analyze right people sometimes that are famous uh, you can see them and you can believe that they have a they are some kind of people but they are not i mm -hmm. mean that is something that happens <laughs> fake image yeah yeah that is it's not it's like a product right that they are so <laughs> Good. Any other comments? Uh, maybe me, teacher. Uh, okay. When when you are a public figure, uh, you need to be careful uh, with your act, and you have to use a lot of ethic with every person that maybe uh, you treat. If if not, maybe you will fail uh, faster than the time that that take or achieve those uh, maybe could be goals because you know those are goals that you achieve and you could lose everything. That is a very important thing. I mean, maybe you worked all your life and then in one situation, you can lose everything, right? Yeah. Uh, because of something that you said. I mean, for example, imagine that actor that said racist things in a show, I mean. Oh, yeah. It was a little moment. He was angry. He did say something that maybe he believed, but he didn't speak out loud. Uh, and at that moment, he was very angry. He said something, and then that's it. The career finishes. It's yeah. not come back. So, and you are also right. Public figures. I mean, everybody will have to have our own ethics, but public figures, because they are people that are recognized and uh, people yeah. admire them uh, it's a big problem and if they do something very small everybody will know so it's, it's not good right yeah that's right they are in the middle of the show so that is it so if, if in the future you become a public figure you need to be more <laughs> careful right because i mean i know that you have values but things happens things change yeah. and everybody will need to be careful about that kind of situation that's right good any other comments on the video i think teacher like you say all the people we have problems edit problems but the problem here is they are famous and all people see them. But <laughs> all, all the people have uh, this this problem. But uh, my my problems are smaller than than there, for example. But we had others others kind of 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 any problem. But exists this problem in number of people. That's problem of uh, showing the video. But nobody knows about them because they are no famous. But like, like socially, uh, we have many things to fix. That is true. And that is something that also we have discussed. You are so right. Everybody, we, I mean, nobody's perfect. We have opinions that may not agree with other people, uh, different kind of opinions. and. Uh, everybody has something like that everybody is maybe like racist or has opinion about uh, uh, many things many things uh, of course there are people that have worse uh, situations for example bill cosby i mean he was a public figure and he represented a family guy something i mean somebody that you would like to to speak with that is your neighbor that you trust him i mean he represented a lot of things and actually i i remember when the scandal came out and i was shocked i mean i i saw him in interviews and in the show in many ways and i never thought 
that he had those kind of problems. I mean, that was a huge problem because it's not the same to be racist and to say, ah, these kind of people, I don't like them, than to actually hurt people physically, right? To to drug girls and to abuse of them. That is totally different. That is a different level. So that was that was something, something very big. So yes, we have problems, uh, maybe about opinions or way of thinking about other things, but no that kind of problems. Those are huge. And sometimes the problem is uh, it comes with power, right? When you have the power and the money, that is when sometimes other, other things arise, right? It's like, it's like when you say, if I were a president, I would do this and this and this. But what happens? I mean, if you really had the chance to be president, you really will do many good things. Or maybe you will just steal money or things like that. With power and money comes a lot of things, a lot of temptations. And then uh, we need to be careful about those situations. The good thing is that we don't have power and we don't have money, right? So, but anyways, as you say, everybody has little things, little things and of course, it's not the same just to have an opinion than to hurt somebody. That is totally, totally different. Good. Any other comments or opinion or anything that you didn't know that in the video that shocked you up? Maybe, teacher, in the past, it was more impressive that behavior because now it's normal or, uh, listen or read and in the news that a famous um famous has some um, not famous um did did a uh, an ad like this or say uh, something racist or or similar but in the past uh, the values was more considering this sherry. No, well, it's, it's, this is sherry is, I don't know, <laughs> the end, call me. Yeah, yeah, actually that is true. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's like a problem, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe when we grew up, we were like uh, thinking that we need to change things. We need to be more like free or uh, something like that. But now that you see everything that is changing, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, everything is more accepted. Everything is, is fine. I mean, uh, but uh, my thinking, for example, is what is going to be like in 10 or 20 more years. How do you think it's going to be in the next years if everything is more accepted and values are changing? How is going to be the world? How is going to be ethics in the future? What do you think? So uh, I think in the future, uh, I, um, I think it's getting worse constantly. So maybe, for example, back in the years, the people seen, uh, seen something bad or seen something good. Uh, it's not the same in the nowadays because the time, I think the people, misunderstand the concept about open line so they think what is bad they see it good and vice versa so in the future uh, the line between what is wrong or what is right will be very um blur blurry i think it's the word. Yeah. Uh, and the values and we will we will lose the values constantly so it's getting worse for me okay yeah actually uh that seems to be the path right it seems that the values are going to be totally different everybody will be free to do whatever they want uh or 
maybe not whatever they want because probably it's not possible to do whatever you want. I mean, if you do whatever you want, maybe you are going to not work and steal money and that's it. And of course that is not going to be possible. But in some aspects, uh, it's going to be like, whatever you want to do is fine with me. Uh, I mean, and uh, of course it's going to cause an impact. I mean, uh, the workplaces in the future are going to be different, right? For example, right now, um, some rules are for girls to not to come with mini skirts to the job and to men to to have a behavior on dressing code with things as well. Maybe in the future, we're not going to have that one, but that is going to cause some other problems. So there are things that are going to be involved in these kind of situations. And uh, yeah, I believe it's going to be a different world. And now it's a different world. Uh, actually, it's not the same world that we lived 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, it was very soon. So what other changes do you believe that we're going to have in the future? Speaking about ethics. Maybe respect, talking about relationship between fathers and son or vice versa. Uh, maybe sons and daughters won't have the same respect for their parents because they are influenced a lot uh, for the uh, media. Nowadays, they think they live a reality because it's what they look in the computer or cell phone in all the social media network. And everybody think that they are like a kind of stars. Uh, that, that is what I think, because they have their own channel. They um, make challenges. They want to overcome and win to the one who made this, this, and this. And it doesn't matter if uh, their life is at risk, their beliefs, uh, or whatever. Uh, maybe they don't think that they can affect the feelings for their parents or the ones around them. I, I think that mm, it will increase the non-respect to your parents for the new generations. Yeah, that is probably something that is going to happen. I mean, it's happening right now, but mm -hmm. now it's getting more and more common, right? So um, I don't know how it's going to happen. And another uh, thing that we have to think about is politics and economics, how it's going to be impacted mm -hmm. by these kind of situations, right? Um, so the whole world is changing because of values changing. Everything is changing because of this. Economies can change and of course politics can change. So definitely it's going to be a, a different world, okay? So uh, if we continue like this one, this kind of things, do you believe that this kind of scandals that we chat today, they will be like normal in the future? It's going to be like, ah, not a problem. What do you think? Well, to be honest, in my opinion, I think in the future, the scandal are more, uh, maybe more strong because uh, I don't remember uh, in the past uh, things happen like that. Maybe in the present, uh, people are more, crazy I think or times uh, is very different I remember uh, maybe in, in the past times are or, or times were like um, discretional maybe and well you remember uh, we didn't have social media and we always uh, know something about uh, things like that by uh, notice or paper news or something like that. So, uh, but in the future, I, 
I imagine that the uh, scandal will be more uh, strong because uh, famous people, I think that don't have, um, como, como que no, no tienen mucha intimidad. Okay, privacy or in intimacy? Privacy, yeah, thank you. I think that people uh, like that uh, don't, don't have uh, privacy, right? Privacy. And, sorry? Privacy. Privacy, yeah. And in general, you know, uh, for example, you are watching your social media, checking whatever things and you suddenly you watch a meme mm -hmm. and it's a regular or normal person so you don't you you don't need to be a famous person to be famous in the future maybe no. because a meme is a a regular form to get uh I don't know, to be, uh, or it's, maybe it's a way to, to um, be a popular, I don't know, but uh, in general, uh, when you are doing weird things in, in, in the street, someone can take a picture and, share that in social media and maybe it's it's a it's como una, puede ser como una foto editada it could be a photoshop a photoshop yeah and, and yeah and someone can change the the real uh, things in that moment so i think in the future will be worse yeah well let's see what happens right okay because of our kids and our family we expect that is a better world but it doesn't seem like at least mm -hmm. in this aspect maybe some other aspect will be good like technology i believe is amazing and it's moving on but let's hope for the better there's nothing else that we can do yeah good we're going to check the attendance then because the time has come it's friday and i need I know that you need to sleep, so. And the 101 of today is going to be for Maria Alejandra Barrientos. So, Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Sorry, teacher, present. Okay. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Abraham Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very nice weekend and also uh, to rest and enjoy. So see you on Monday and uh, dream in English. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you teacher. Bye. Bye to everyone. Goodbye. Mm.
Hello, Maria Alejandra. How are you? I'm fine. You? I'm very tired, but I'm happy to be here with you. <laughs> okay. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, yeah, at least. But anyways. <laughs> okay. Okay. How do you feel that you are moving on with English? Do you feel that you are learning, that you are getting things? Um, yes, teacher. I think I feel that um, I learn more words with a different videos, or when I try to say different things, or when I read the uh, articles uh, you put and. Um, Maybe don't know that word, but and I try to pronunciation because I don't know it's not common or in my day. Uh, I don't I don't have a necessary or it's not necessary for me to speak in English with other person. In that in the night, uh, the only moment that I try to hear and write and practice, but. I think that uh, that when I start, <laughs> I improve. <laughs> okay, very good. I'm happy to hear that one. And did you start the classes here online? Did you start from the very beginning and the basic? Mm, yes, basic uh, five. Ah, okay, very good. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> maybe have a one year and half to have a classes online with uh, the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. <laughs> and uh, do you have any question about anything that we have checked in the classes and in, in this module and the previous modules? Mm, in this moment, no, teacher. I try to... I do the platform, I only don't do or did that exercise one point nine because I hear that I have a problem. Yeah. And this weekend I try to finish the, the second part and the midterm, but I try to do the different sentence and I feel good when I have, uh, have more sense for that uh, sentence and you try to own me salió bien very good very good mm -hmm. okay. that don't need that teacher okay i'm very happy to hear that you're moving on so and speaking about english which part is the one that is more difficult for you so for example writing reading listening speaking mm. I think when I speak because I have a problem when I to use a verb, maybe I combine the present and past or then don't use that correct. And I think that my problem now is when is not when I write. Uh, maybe here because I think that um, uh, my I don't have the opportunity to hear that a lot of, and maybe that words is dif difficult for me, or maybe when I see I reconnoise, um, la reconozco, reconoce, eh? recognize. Um, recognize, but I think that when I speak it's more difficult because I try to search or the word in my mind <laughs> and maybe to hide <laughs> okay. but I think that when I speak okay so if that is the case the only thing that you need to do is well there are many things that you can do you can watch more videos of things that you that you are um, interested in so that is good. So you are learning how to listen and then you are going to learn how to pronounce some words. Uh, also reading is a good thing, but you can read out loud. So you can read the words and try to check the pronunciation and try to participate more in class. So that is going to help you also. So that is a very good thing. Okay, sure. I try to more participation in the class. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I believe that also you have improved a lot. So uh, I've been with you only two months. But if you continue with the English classes, of course, um, you are going to get to the next level. And yeah, maybe uh, pra practice a little bit more when you have the classes. Just speak whenever you have the chance. Um, don't worry about the opinion, if it's correct or not correct. But it's important for you to practice a little bit more. So that will be the only thing. Other than that, everything is fine. Okay, sure. I try to do. Okay. Also remember that if you have questions about a platform or anything in the class or anything in English, even if it's not in the class, you can chat with me directly or uh, in the group. And of course, it will be a pleasure to help you out. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Perfect. So mm -hmm. it was a pleasure to be with you, Maria Alejandra. Have a very nice weekend and see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. See you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye now. Bye.